Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the D1. Um, this is my first experience with diode lasers. As some of you know, I've made videos on CO2 lasers, including the LaserBox Pro and Rotary. Today we're going to be looking at the ins and outs of what comes with the 10 watt D1 uh, Deluxe, so including the Rotary. So let's get to it. Here we have the D1 box. It ran into some slight nicks during shipping, but it's incredibly well packaged, so it didn't bother anything inside. And I am going to head to a space to assemble. All right, here we have the manual and some stickers that are fun that come with it. Um, the eight risers that come with the rotary, the frame, including the Wi-Fi. Here's the rotary attachment itself. And then we have the main parts. So we've got the 10 watt laser head, uh, comes with the shield already on it. We've got the power and connection cables and then the cross pieces. All right, here is all the stuff. Uh, it was really easy to assemble. Um, it's so well machined that it didn't, didn't take too much to get it to square. Uh, a couple extra hands can help out. Um, I had to fish through to get the, the belt, um, but following the manual itself, I was able to uh, connect all the things, use the zip ties. Um, in future, I'm going to change out the zip ties. And then here we have some of the first tests. Uh, it was really quite easy to uh, get it up and running. Um, this, is a, this is an image that I ran through Imager. So you can see the, the detail, and this is just some scrap wood. Uh, focusing was really simple, and I believe this only took about seven or eight minutes. So it was actually pretty quick to get up and running. All right, you can see the, the amount of details is pretty amazing for a 10 watt laser. Here I'm trying out, um, it came with some samples and had a little, little issue with uh, figuring out the framing, but here's some stainless steel, which marked without any other additional help. Um, again, if you're doing other metals, you'll need to, to, to plan accordingly. And then just trying a wooden, a wooden luggage tag Again, for how small this was, a credible amount of detail um, popped out. So again, trying a, a thicker piece of wood, the focus went in and out as the machine was going. Um, but again, showing that you can, you can get much uh, taller items in there and that focus uh, is really easy to, to get it centered. And then I did some cut tests. Um, I did, this is six millimeter uh, black acrylic. I also did uh, three millimeter basswood. And then setting up the rotary, um, we overshot. <laughs> we thought it might need both, but uh, ended up taking off one of those, uh, one of those sets of risers and hooking up the rotary. I felt uh, a little, little uncomfortable, you know, pushing in the rotary attachment cord, um, but we got it in fine. Um, I had the orientation off, but framing showed me that. Again, it took me uh, not, not that long to get a couple of tests going. It's great that there's just a switch in there where you can say cylindrical object, and it, it automatically changes the orientation. So I did a, an outline of a vector, and then I did the uh, rasterizing. Some of the things I liked having experimented uh, for a couple weeks, I like the amount of fidelity that there is, um, especially for a 10 watt diode laser, there's a ton of detail you can get out of engraving. I was actually surprised how intuitive doing cylindrical objects is, both uh, the outlines and engraving in. Um, once I got it plugged in, um, it was easy to just set up and go. Um, I also, um, I learned framing. 
um, with the stainless steel. Um, but you can see there's so many things you can do by being able to um, do some marking without any agent or anything like that on metal objects. I enjoyed uh, trying out a bunch of different engraving methods. I use imager.com, but it also, in the software itself, has Jarvis, Stuki, it has a lot of those dithers built in, as well as grayscale. If you want to try and do 3D, um, 3D etching, you can try that out. All right, here we have the Laserbox software. Uh, it's free to use it. You can just download it from the website. Make sure that you get Laserbox Basic um, and not the other one, which is for a different machine. Here you can see all the options. You can check up dates and firmware. It's got all your typical design tools, as well as this shows the connection. Um, your, when you're plugged in, it'll show up up here. You can also connect wirelessly. And then over here, if you have an engraving image, there's different options, power, speed. Uh, and then down here, you can choose dither, um, the lines per centimeter, which is basically how many times is it gonna go back and forth within the space. Um, you don't wanna go all the way to the top because it's gonna overburn. I typically do between 100 and 200. And then um, you can choose whether you want it to, to burn while it goes back and forth or if you want it to just burn in one direction. And then there are just a couple of basic editing things down here. And that is it. It's fully adequate for what you need. Um, since there's compatibility with light burn, you can also uh, invest in that and do a lot more robust processing with the D1. So some safety concerns, since it's an open frame, you wanna make sure you're in an open space, you have a lot of ventilation. Um, I have kids, so I have to have this in a space that's away from them. Um, I'd also recommend it comes with some great goggles. I'd recommend getting additional pairs if you're gonna have more people in the area. Um, something I also noticed when using it, if you don't focus it correctly, the dock can get large enough that it's gonna cause issues with burning. So with every laser, regardless of enclosure or not, you wanna make sure that you're monitoring it the entire time it's going. Um, other than that, it's really, it's really solid. It's really well built. Um, and I don't see, I don't see any other safety concerns um, in the time that I've had it. So in conclusion, the D1 is a great entry level machine if you're going to um, be looking into a diode. Uh, its open design allows for a lot of versatility. Um, with the risers, you can get a lot of larger objects underneath it. You can also set it on objects. There's a lot of mobility if you want to take it to places, do on-the-site work. Um, I also found that there are tons of possibilities with the rotary. And since filming this uh, today, I got the X-Tool honeycomb and the, uh, the bed plate that comes with that. So stay tuned for more videos about what the D1 can do and some more advanced projects. Um, so look forward to that. And as always, have fun lasering.